What's up guys? Welcome to the Chess Giant. This is Solomon Ordell, and in today's video, we're going to be covering the Bullfrog or Gibbons Gambit. Honestly, one of the strangest chess openings I've ever seen in my entire life, but it's surprisingly playable. It starts off by white playing d4 and against knight f6, not playing a normal move like c4 or knight f3 or g3, but the crazy looking move g4, looking to play g5, attacking that knight on f6. Now in today's video, we're really going to be putting an emphasis on what to do against the accepted variation. But what happens if black just plays a move like d5? Well, now we're going to play g5, taking up space on the king side of the board, attacking that knight on f6. And if a move like knight e4, we can now play f3, kicking that knight back to d6, in which case we can now play knight c3, supporting this e4 pawn push. And right now, I mean, this is a very difficult position to play with as the black pieces. Right now, we're putting a ton of pressure on d5 with both our e4 pawn and our knight on c3. And obviously, the queen isn't defending it right now because of this very awkwardly placed knight on d6. So if black does play a move like d takes e4, this actually turns out to be a mistake as tempting as it is because we can just take back with the f pawn. And now two of our centralized pawns are really looking to take control of that fifth rank, not to mention our pawn on g5 attacking both f6 and h6. This is a very fun position to play with as the white pieces, not to mention that this knight on d6 is very awkwardly placed. I mean, when's the last time you saw a knight on d6 at move seven in the game? So that covers what happens if black plays a move like d6 or d5. We're simply going to play g5 attacking that knight and then look to really control the center of the board. What happens if black takes the pawn on g4? Well, again, we're taking full control of the center of the board at move three with e4, taking control of the center of the board, and on top of that, attacking the knight on g4. Now, really, in this position, black generally has two options, defending the knight or dropping the knight back. One option is knight f6, and the other two options we're going to be covering in this video are d6 and d5. Let's first take a look at knight f6. What do we do against this move? Well, again, we're going to push. This is a gambit. We're trying to play aggressive attacking chess by playing e5, really looking to put some pressure on that knight. And if knight g8 is played, I mean, black's pieces haven't even moved. And we have a pretty good edge in development and space in the center of the board. And if the move knight d5 is played, we're going to play c4, kicking that knight back to b6, forcing black to play the same knight for the fifth straight move. And now we have knight c3. And honestly, in this position, I think it's probably in black's best interest to really try to undermine the center of the board here with a move like d6. But now we just naturally develop with knight f3 prepared for d takes e5 with knight takes e5. This knight on e5 would be a very strong centralized minor piece. If a move like bishop g4 looking to pin the knight, that's okay. We're going to play rook g1, attacking that bishop and really enjoying this open file, putting some pressure on g7 once that bishop gets out of the way. And if a move like knight c6, which by the way is a very common idea in the Alakine's defense, I mean playing d6, having a knight on b6, and then putting this knight on c6, really trying to put some pressure on the centralized pawns, this actually turns out to be a big mistake because of the key move, e6. This is a very strong move, idea being if bishop takes e6, we can play d5, forking both of the minor pieces, and if f takes e6, we can play knight g5. I absolutely love this move. Really, the whole idea is that we want to play queen f3, followed by queen f7 check, swing this bishop to h3, and really put a ton of pressure on that e6 pawn. And there's really no way for black to stop this. I mean, if black does play a move like h6, trying to attack our knight, well, we just play queen h5 with check, attacking the king. If king d7, we now break the game open with d5, attacking both the knight and this pawn on e6. And here, if black does play a move like h takes g5, going, okay, look, I'll give you my rook. We'll be sitting at even material. And yes, my king is a little bit awkwardly placed, but then I can play knight e5. And sitting at even material, I can use both of my knights to really try to attack that c4 pawn and try to crawl back into this game. But this is a mistake because we now have d takes e6 with check attacking the king. And now we actually have a forced mate in five. King takes e6 is played. We have bishop h3 check attacking the king. And following king f6, bishop takes g5. And now after king e5, I mean, there's a ton of different ways to win here, but the quickest route is bishop f6. What a move. I mean, both our queen and our bishop are both attacked 
by two pawns, the king and the rook on h8, but because it's a double check, black can't capture both. And if black does capture the bishop on f6, well, we simply have knight e4 checkmate game over. And if king f4, I mean, well, the king's on f4. We play queen g5 check, forcing that king to f3, in which case we now play queen e3 checkmate game over. I love this variation for the bullfrog gambit. So playing a move here like h6 simply does not work. I mean, we play queen h5 attacking the king, break the game open with d5, and black is going to lose very quickly there. What happens if black plays a move like e5? Well, again, we're just continuing with our queen f3 idea. And if knight takes f4, looking to give the king a little bit of breathing room, potentially bringing that king to c6, we still have a one game. We're going to play queen f7 check, followed by bishop h3 check, forcing king c6, in which case we now play bishop g2 check, forcing the king back. Now notice, just a couple moves ago, our bishop was on f1, but now it's on g2. Really what we did was we played bishop h3, attacking the king, and following king c6, played bishop g2, again attacking the king, in which case the king just had to go straight back. So now we have the same exact position as a couple moves ago, except now our bishop is on g2, a much more active diagonal, than that square on f1 and now we have the move knight b5 and honestly i have white as simply better i mean look at the activity of our pieces our queen on f7 both of our knights in this position the bishop on g2 black is on the brink of losing this game and i plug this into computer programs and again it gives white the clear edge in this position if black plays perfectly but honestly this game could be over in a couple moves so that covers the move knight f6, in which we play e5, kicking that knight, continue with c4, knight f3, I mean just taking control in the center of the board, and we really do have some fun chances for aggressive and attacking chess. Now let's go over the other two options of not bringing the knight back, but defending the knight on g4 with either d6 or d5. Let's first take a look at d6. Against this, I personally really like playing h3, kicking that knight back to f6, in which case we can now play knight c3, bishop g5, and after bishop g7, queen d2. Notice the moves we're playing right now. There's not really a ton that black can do to stop this. And now after castling kingside, we castle queenside, creating a huge imbalance in the position, both of our kings on opposite sides of the board, which means that we're going to aggressively attack the king. And now if a move like c6, we can develop with knight g e2 and eventually break through with the very aggressive e5 attacking the knight on f6 if a move like d takes e5 we can simply take back and i think in this situation it's probably best for black to play queen takes d2 but even then i mean we play rook takes d2 and if a move like knight fd7 we can now take the pawn on b5 threatening to play knight c7 attacking the rook and i know some of you are probably wondering wait why can't black just take the knight well if this is played we now have bishop g2 and the computer has this around even but i personally from a practical standpoint would much rather be white i mean right now we are really attacking the rook on a8 and the only move here to defend that is knight b6 we have a very active bishop on g5 attacking e7 another rook on h1 that is ready to get involved in this game an active rook on d2 a knight on e2 that is ready to get involved at a moment's notice and we really do have a fun middle game here as i just mentioned the best move here for black is actually taking the queen and this is the only move i mean if a move like knight fd7 we're actually simply winning with e6 again a very common and strong idea in the bullfrog gambit attacking that knight on d7 if f takes e6 we now play knight f4 attacking that double isolated pawn and notice how this knight on d7 can't really get out of the way to allow the bishop to defend it because we have a battery ram on d1 and d2 ready to capture that queen on d8 honestly in this position white is simply winning and it really does surprise me just how dangerous the bullfrog gambit is i mean yes if black plays perfectly they're going to be okay but i mean we're talking very reasonable looking moves and all of a sudden you have a knight on f4 attacking e6 a strong bishop on g5 a battery ram on d2 and d1 i mean this is clearly winning for white and honestly all of black's moves seem pretty reasonable the bullfrog gambit is extremely dangerous so we just cover the move d6 in which we play h3 kicking that knight back continue with knight c3 bishop g5 queen d2 castle queen side and we really do have some fun attacking chess what about the move d5 i mean aggressively fighting for the center of the board while also defending 
that knight on g4. I personally think white's best chance is with e5. And here in this position, black's best move is c5. Again, fighting for the center of the board. Black cannot allow white to simply develop their pieces and really fortify this pawn structure in the center of the board. So c5 here is definitely black's best option, in which case we can play h3, forcing that knight back to h6. Notice here how the knight can't go to f6 because of this pawn on e5. So we see knight h6, in which case we can capture that knight. And following g takes h6, we have knight f3. Just now naturally developing our pieces. I do think that black is better in this position, but this is definitely playable for white. I mean, even if a move like C takes D4, which again is black's best option according to the computer, we can take back with our queen, following knight c6, play bishop b5, pinning that knight. We're going to continue with either knight c3, attacking d5, or even knight d2, followed by castle and queenside, get a rook on that g file, and we're just playing chess. If you'd like to learn more about the theory behind the Beaver Gambit, a very aggressive chess opening against the Sicilian defense, click the video to the left. If you'd like to learn more about the Hippopotamus defense, a fun and strong chess opening that you can play with either white or black, click the video to the right. Leave a comment to let me know what other videos you'd like to see covered on this channel. And as always, I appreciate you guys. Thanks for watching. Peace.